Hi everyone, welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they are working on. Today we have Isabel. Hi Isabel, tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Hi, yes, um, my name is Isabel. I work at Gene AI and I'm an engineer here at Gene AI. I started working here about uh, nine months ago and joined the NOW team or the search team. And um, other, other than that, I'm also a very passionate linguist. Um, yeah, and today I'll be showing you a bit about our project called Now um, that you can deploy search applications with. And yeah, so um, basically Now tries to make search application deployment very easy for you uh, as a technical or maybe as a non-technical person. So we aim to build a tool that you can use to deploy search apps or neural search apps within just a few minutes. And hopefully with just a few clicks or potentially just a few lines of code. Um, yeah. I want to see that. Yes, um, let's jump. I, I guess I can tell you a bit more about the app first um, before mm -hmm. we jump into the demo. Um, so the application is built on Gina infrastructure, which means it, it'll be hopefully reliable and scalable. Um, and it's built with our internal ML ops framework called Gina. Um, so ideally you should be able to um, deploy a search application that uses neural search. And that means that you'll be using machine learning to do a search through your data set, um, which should provide a lot better results than doing traditional symbolic search. And maybe you're not familiar with neural search, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit uh, background and context for that as well. So um, in contrast to symbolic search, symbolic search works just on text, and you can search through your data set with keywords. Um, and you have to have an input with text and also your documents have to be labeled with text. Uh, whereas with neural search, um, this uses machine learning to create dense vectors and representations for your data in the latent space. And that allows you to search not only with keywords and filters, but also search with other modalities, for example, with images. So I guess what we're doing in neural search is um, that you can compare the embedding or the representation of your query to all of your indexed documents which should also be um, yeah, encoded with the same model. Um, yeah, so I guess I can at this point jump into the demo. Yes, please. Cool. So I've downloaded a data set from Kaggle that contains a whole bunch of fashion data. And um, this is a view of the first uh, data point. It contains um, an ID, a description, a text description of the fashion um, item. Uh, a name and a product URL, and as you can see, also an image uh, URI down here, um, which we will be using for our neural search. Um, and then we have some other fields here, like brand and price and color that we might want to use for filtering, for example. And now I'll show you how you can process this data with um, in, into a data structure called Dockeray, which is created by Gina as well. Um, basically, we can create a nice document representation using data class. This will be our fashion doc. It will contain description and the name of our fashion item and also an image for this, for this fashion item. So these are the fields that we will be indexing or creating uh, embeddings for like latent representations of this data point. And um, we can also then, when we are processing the data, add all of the other things that we want to take from the from the data point, like the color or the uh, the category or the price, and add them as tags to our document, which is what we're doing here. Um, I won't spend too much time on this document creation. You can take a look at the Dockeray documentation if you want to have a look. It's also open source. Um, yeah, and then I will show you what a document looks like in a, in a summary. And down here, we are saving the documents to binary first to like a local storage. And afterwards, I'm also pushing this data set to our cloud infrastructure. So it will be hosted on what we call Hubble, where you can download this data set. Um, obviously, you have to be logged in for this. So before I do any of the script running, I am logging into Gina and making sure that this data can set it be is used without my account. the cloud. Yes, of course. You can also just um, specify a local path to your data. Um, I'll show you that in the in this in this um, for the deployment. Yeah. So I won't run the script right now because it might take some time. But um, we can take a look at uh, a script for deploying the application. 
So here I've written a, quite a short script for deploying. Um, so I'm setting here a log level debug just so I can see what's actually happening inside. And um, then because we've designed the um, whole uh, repo as a that you can use it quite easily with a CLI. I'm also passing here keyword arguments. You could also pass these obviously as just a long um, yeah, command, command in your terminal with all of the flags if you want, but I think this is a bit neater. So I'm starting the now app, um, specifying that this will be a search app. And then I'm selecting a dataset type Dockeray and also giving it the a flow name, like a, this will be for my service. Um, I'm just calling it a fashion demo. And then here I'm passing the data set name under which I actually pushed the data set. You don't have to uh, provide this Docker um, name. You can also just provide a file path here instead of data set name. And then here I'm telling um, the app which of the fields from my document I want to index. So I don't actually have to select all of them, but I am just selecting all three. And then I'm deciding for my description field, which model do I want to encode this field with? So in this case, I'm just encoding all three of these fields with clip because clip is multimodal and can encode images as well as text, which is really great. And clip then I'm also a selecting- a pre-trained model, right? Uh... Yes, exactly. So currently in our app, um, I'm not specifying any fine tuning for this model, though we also plan to support this in the future that you can also uh, fine tune a clip model with your particular data set and that might enhance also your results. But for now, this is just going to use vanilla clip. Um, I think it's V32 uh, or something like that. We can have a look if you want. And then I'm selecting some filter fields that I want to be able to filter my documents on. I already explained this a bit. And the deployment type is coming from here remote. It will be a remote deployment. You can also try to set this as local then um, we will set up a local Kubernetes cluster. So you need to make sure that you have Docker running. Uh, remote is uh, when you use uh, Gina Cloud, right? And uh, exactly. local would be, you would use something like the, how do you call it? Kubernetes and Docker kind, right? Something yes, like exactly. We will set that up for you. So you just need to make sure to have Docker running with like eight gigabytes and that should be fine. Mm -hmm. Do you um, even need then... to do like kubectl or something like that? Or just Docker um... is not? Just Docker is enough. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Should be good. As long as you have Gina installed and, and these are in the requirements for now. So should be fine. Um, then I guess you could also, uh, if you want to, you can secure the application so that you specify a certain number of emails that you want to be able to access this um, application. But I'm not doing that here just for simplicity's sake. And um, yeah, that's already it. Here we're calling the CLI. Um, and I will actually show you also what the CLI looks like just for interest's sake. We can quickly see what that looks like in a terminal. I am using Conda. So now we can call, I've already cloned this repo. So we are currently in the now repo and I can run uh, Python main start. This is also like calling Gina now start. Uh, which is what we describe in our documentation. So when I start it like this, I can select a Docker document array name. I'm doing this because I uploaded the data, so it's quite easy to do this. Um, so I have a fashion docs, and I limited this to a thousand documents just for the stock, uh, this demo. That should already look into my data set that I've hosted there and tell me which uh, fields are available for indexing. And then I can select those fields as well as uh, some fields I want to filter on. So here I'm just going to category brand, price and color. And now I can select the models that I want to encode my data with. So I'm just going to select clip. So for a text to text retrieval, you probably want to use Esprit as well because it's much better for that. But clip will do fine. And I will call this fashion demo. And I won't be securing the flow. <laughs> um, so yeah, then you can see it's deserializing my documents. And um, because I set a log level, it shows me what the YAML will look like for deploying this application, if you're interested. And then it will start deploying my app. 
I won't wait for this to finish. Um, this is this is what it will look like once it finishes. So here I just indexed 500 documents um, and it was done in 47 minutes. It will give you two gateways. So we have one for gRPC and one for HTTP. Um, HTTP one also has our API docs. So you could take a look at this to see what the API will look like. Um, what the endpoints are, I won't go into too much detail here. And then most interestingly, there's also a playground that you can have a look at, which I will show you now. So this is our fashion uh, demo with a thousand documents indexed. And um, yeah, the UI is quite simple. It's just built with Streamlit. Um, and there are always things that we can improve here. So let's take a look. Um, maybe I will query with dress because it's a fashion demo. Um, let's see what that retrieves. So we've got a bunch of addresses and we can see um, it's indexed also the description and also the title. And we can also do some filtering. We can add some color, maybe black. I guess this one has black in the description, so it also stays. Um, yeah. Um, ideally, if you also want to customize how your documents are scored, you can add some semantic scoring here. So um, I'm inputting just text right now. I can decide which fields of my index documents I want to compare this text to. So maybe for now, I will just compare it to the image. The encoder will just be clipped because we only selected one model and I can say what the weight is. Um, if I have just one semantic score here, it doesn't really make sense to add the weight or to change the weight. Um, but if I add another semantic score, maybe I want to say that this comparison with the description should be weighted stronger for whatever reason. Maybe this gives me better results. And I can also see the score breakdown for each document. Um, one cool thing I also want to mention is that we support hybrid search in the setup. So you can add a BM25 score here. Um, what this will do, so you can only add this if you're querying with text because that's how BM25 works, um, just on text to text. And um, this will compare to the documents um, by concatenating this description as well as the name together into one field and then doing the, uh, the BM25 scoring on that field. The results aren't changing too much, but yeah. And if you add an image to your query, uh, both image and text, so it will do filtering on both, right? So it will uh, not only show uh, items that have similar images, but also items that contain the uh, the term or something related yes. to something like synonyms or something like that, right? Exactly. So the if I delete all these semantic scores, the cosine similarity will be calculated on all combinations and weighted with one. So it will be all, uh, those are the default settings. Yeah. And I think that's that's already it. And you show your GitHub repo. Yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this is how it. To, how to give you a star. Maybe you can show us. Yeah. Uh, up here is where you can give us a star. <laughs> I've already started this repo, so <laughs> there we go. Yeah, um, so that's uh, quite impressive. So it just gives you search out of the box without all you need to do is just index the document and then start using the search, right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, uh, if you have trouble uploading your documents, you can also take a look at our documentation. So you'll find that at now.gina.ai. And um, here we also have some demos that you can take a look at and a quick start um, with the interactive CLI. If you want to know more about how to upload your data, here you can take a look. This is basically exactly what I showed in the demo, um, creating a nice data class for your document. In this case, it's just a page. And um, you could potentially push it or also just save it to binary. Um, also, if you don't want to use Docker A at all or pre-process your data, you can um, also just give us your path to your data locally. Maybe um, your data lives in a folder called data and you have a whole bunch of images. You can just specify this path uh, data images and we will automatically try to load um, your data. So you don't have to uh, pre-process it into a Docker A yourself. We also have support That's... for S3 and uh -huh. yeah. 
I'm just wondering if now stands for anything. Like, does it mean anything? Is it an abbreviation or you just like the name? I think um, the name came probably from, from wanting to uh, enable search deployment like in a couple of seconds or minutes. Uh -huh. Like right now. now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't stand for anything. It's just about like how fast you can uh, have search. Exactly. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I understand. Mm -hmm. How many people are working on this project? Um, internally, our team consists of seven people. We've recently grown in two numbers um, over the last couple of months. And um, yeah, we're also integrating um, now into a new front end. Um, Gina Cloud. Um, I can't tell too much about this because it's not released yet, but um, I think that's a really exciting new avenue. And uh, if you count also external contributors who are active? Uh, I don't think we currently have any uh, active ex external contributors. I think sometimes there are some issues created by externals, but um, no active contributions as of yet. So if you want to contribute, we'd be super happy if you want to. Yeah. Can you tell us how to actually do this if somebody wants to contribute, but to make yeah. any contribution, be it creating an issue or, I don't know, giving you feedback on documentation or actually yes. solving some issues and working on the code? Feedback on the documentation is always very much appreciated. Um, here you can have a look at the current issues that we are investigating. Um, there are definitely a lot of tests that also be, need to be refactored. Someone's already working on this. Um, yeah, this is probably the best, best place to have a look at the things that are still uh, currently needed or yeah, need to be worked on. And do you have any good first issues? Um, I don't think we've got a label like this at the moment. So if somebody wants to get started, maybe they should speak with you first. Do you have like a Potentially Slack community or Discord or something like that where people yes. can ask you? Yes, we have a big uh, Slack community at um, Gina. I can send you that afterwards, after the mm -hmm. demo yeah, as well. Do. And yeah, we're always happily welcoming new, new members. And we also have a Discord channel uh, for some of the projects, for example, Docker has a Discord community. Um, yeah. I, do you plan this year to take part in Google Summer of Code or Hacktoberfest or any anything like that? Yes, we are part of uh, Summer Code. I think I already looked at this document. Um, mm. Yeah, so Gina is selected as one of the 19 organizations. Google Summer of Code. So, so please do really send nice this to... link too. Uh, what's the what are the deadlines if somebody wants to apply? Uh, here are the instructions. Yeah, there till March. April four. So there is still one month, right, before uh, it closes. So yes, should be enough time. Plenty of time. <laughs> what are your plans? What do you want to do next for this project? For now. Um. I think uh, there is still quite a bit of integration that we need to do with our infrastructure teams. Um, there are also some ideas for integrating um, new dashboards that you can see what we are, um, yeah, error logging or numbers logging anything with Grafana and open tele te telemetry. That would be um, probably one of the next steps. And uh, we would also quite like to host more models. Um, I think currently we only support SBIRT and CLIP. Uh, I think those do quite a lot. Um, I think they cover most use cases, but also like I said uh, earlier, it would be great to support fine tuning as part of um, Gina now. Currently, if you wanted to use um, a, fine a fine tuned model, it would be quite difficult. I think you would have to um, yeah, specify a new service uh, linking to a, yeah, a new fine tuned model. So we also have um, an internal team called Fine Tuner that does all of this out the box. So I think we need some more integration with that um, project in order to enable Fine Tuner. Yeah. Does it also live under your Gina um, organization in GitHub? Is Fine Tuner? Yes. Um, you can take a look here at Fine Tuner. Okay. And there should also be a GitHub link somewhere around here. Probably under the logo under star. That's the documentation. 
And here's French Um, You forgot to start, I think. Oh my goodness. <laughs> then I can show you right now how to do it. There we yeah. go. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so last question. Um, do you have any advice to anyone who is watching this? Um, yeah, I guess if you've never contributed to open source, I would highly recommend and encourage it. Um, I think the open source community is really great and really positive and a really warm community. Um, even if you're just, like I said, uh, updating documentation or finding some styling errors, or maybe you're making bigger, want to make a bigger contribution as a bug or a, a feature, um, I'd always uh, encourage that. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else right now. <laughs> you probably mean not contribute a bug, but contribute a fix for a bug, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Solving the bugs, not yeah. creating the bugs. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the demo, uh, amazing demo. Like it's so easy to get started with uh, neural search. It's amazing. Yeah. So thanks a lot for doing this in open source. Thanks a lot for um, showing it. Great. Um, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Goodbye.